The Pittsburgh Steelers and Cleveland Browns organizations have each been fined $250,000 in three $250,000 and three players. Cleveland's Miles Garrett and Larry Ojanobi and Pittsburgh's Maurice Pouncey have been suspended without pay for their actions in Thursday night's game. Thursday night's game. Garrett has been suspended without pay indefinitely at a minimum for the remainder of the regular season and postseason and must meet with the commissioner's office prior to a decision on his reinstatement. He was also fined an additional amount. Garrett violated unnecessary roughness and unsportsmanlike conduct rules as well as fighting, removing the helmet of an opponent, and using the helmet as a weapon. Pouncey has been suspended without pay for three games and fined an additional amount for fighting, including punching and kicking an opponent. Ojinobi has been suspended without pay for one game and fined an additional amount for unnecessary uh, and fined an additional amount for unnecessary roughness, specifically for shoving an opposing player to the ground during an altercation. Additional discipline for other players will be forthcoming through the standard accountability process, including those that left the bench to enter the fight area. Under the collective bargaining agreement, the suspensions may be appealed within within three business days. Appeals are heard and decided by either Derek Brooks or James Thrash. The officers jointly appointed and compensated by the NFL and NFL Players Association to decide appeals of on-field player discipline. So, Garrett suspended indefinitely. Penalty got three games. Ojanobi has one game. And I'm just going to do a quick check on Twitter because I heard that, uh, they said in the statement additional fines were coming. Um, yeah, apparently there, there still hasn't been anything for Mason Rudolph, the instigator of the whole fight. And so Tuesday, Monday, Monday, after Browns in our blood. After we recorded, and you can watch that on YouTube or on hyphen podcastgroup.com. Plug, as Maps would say. Ah, oh, man. Anthony said, I would like to go watch the Brown Steelers game on Thursday night. I said, I'll let you know. So Thursday rolls around, and uh, check with the wife, and she's perfectly fine with that. So, thusly, I go meet up with Anthony at the University Town Center Buffalo Wild Wings, joined by a friend of the show, friend of me, Gary Wolf, who is a Steelers fan. I am the Browns fan by, by uh, marriage, so to speak. Still a Raiders fan, but obviously pulling for the Browns because I hate the Steelers. Hate them, hate them, hate them. That wasn't a catch, Franco Harris. And so we watch the first half, eat our food. Gary takes his leave. He's more responsible than me. Plus, he has to drive to work further than I do. So me and Anthony's watching the second half. The Browns play possibly their best game of the entire season. There's some questionable hits. Juju gets knocked out with a um, concussion. Another player goes out with a concussion. And social media is stirring that the Browns are playing dirty. But just for the record, one, football is very violent. We all know that. Some of the hits did look very blatant. One Browns player got thrown out for his uh, helmet-to-helmet hit. And the, the Steelers have had their fair share of flagrant hits over the years. Just, just throwing that out there. But it's, it's professional football, it's college football, high school football. Football at any level is dangerous. Like, I was listening to Simmons and uh, who's your man? Cousin Sal. And Sal and Simmons, uh, Sal was talking about how he went to with his son's, uh, I think, uh, middle school 
football game or something. Uh, some kind of organized football. But, I mean, I, I think his son is, like, younger than 16 but older than 10. Anyway, his first year playing football. His son did not get hurt, but there's another player, a friend of his son's, who took a wallop in that game. And thankfully he's okay, but he said the hit was just so brutal. It was just scary watching that kid be motionless for a while. So football is a dangerous sport. All that aside, the Browns beat the Steelers last night. Defense looked fantastic. Oh, Steve Wilkes, an apology. I said Steve Wilkes is not a good defensive coordinator. I said the Browns weren't responding to him, and then they show up and do what they did last night. So my Steve Wilkes hot take is now dead. And again, you can go back and watch that episode whenever you want to. It's available on Monster Lung Sound Vision YouTube channel. And the game is closing out. Uh, God, what was the score? The Browns had 17. I know that much. Let me check real quick. Pitt v. Cleveland... Steelers are brown. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the Browns won 21 7. Hiya, puddins. It's your girl, Holly Quinn, aka Dr. Holly and Quinzel, here to tell you all about it's like a podcast or whatever. We talk about nerd stuff and life stuff. And if you want to know what we're about, check out the Powie Awards, our 100th episode, Q and Slay, or Theater from Our Butts. Have a good day, puddings, and love, trust, and belief. So... (sighs) It's... It's the end of the game, like within the last 15 seconds. Steelers are deep in their own territory. Rudolph, Mason Rudolph, the quarterback from uh, Oklahoma State, who has been the Steelers starter for most of the year after Roethlisberger went down, he drops back for a pass, gets the pass off. I believe he doesn't complete it. Miles Garrett was coming for him, which is the – the Browns is uh, number one draft pick from a few years back. And he's coming for him. And he, he's close enough where Rudolph gets rid of the ball, but he can't stop his forward momentum. But he doesn't try to wallop Rudolph. He, he essentially wraps him up and proceeds to take him down. Now, could there have been a penalty called? Maybe. It wasn't rough in the passer. It was probably a very clean tackle. Probably the gentlest tackle you could possibly do at that point in the game. And Mason Rudolph decides he didn't like it. So Mason Rudolph proceeds to start popping shit and starts pulling on Miles Garrett's helmet as he's trying to get up from the tackle. Partially succeeds in pulling the helmet. Well, not partially. He succeeds in pulling the helmet at least halfway off of Garrett's head before he lets go. And now there's other players around trying to separate them. I believe they were Steelers players. Garrett is up. And Garrett takes offense to Rudolph's offense, you know? So Miles Garrett, who in his three seasons in the league, has been a pretty much stand-up dude from everything I've seen, as well as being an exceptional on the field talent. Never has heard, haven't heard anything bad about this guy. Proceeds to grab Mason Rudolph's helmet. And he rips it off of his head. So now the helmet's off. I mean, obviously there's gonna be unsportsmanlike conduct penalty at this point, and he's being pushed away Rudolph is still attempting to. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to look it up. Rudolph is still attempting to go after Miles Garrett. Hold on. Here we go.
There's a way better video of this. Hold on. Come on, Reddit. They had a not safe for work video and everything up. They probably took that shit down. Brown Steelers fight. The video blocked from the NFL. Yeah, the NFL is deep six in that shit real quick. Maybe. Hold on. Let's see if there is a. Normally they're pretty good about putting up mirrors, mirror links. Hold on. Flag as whoa, whoa. Uh, All right, so let me just break it down to you real quick. I know this is great podcasting, but I just want to have it accurate as to what. comes, wraps him up. He even he even goes down first. So so Garrett goes down on the tackle. I said it was a very soft tackle. All right. So Rudolph gets the ball off, wraps him up, and then Miles kind of twists so that the hit isn't that hard. So here's Rudolph going after him. There's two Steelers around him. Then Miles is mad, pulls the helmet. Rudolph goes after him. Okay. Okay, let me calm down. Mason Rudolph chased after the helmet is ripped off by Miles Garrett. Two Steelers are in between after the helmet comes off. Here we go. All right, he got his helmet. All right, so he got a flag for unsportsman. The ref throws a flag. There's one, there's two dudes there. There's uh, 66 and 71. I can't read their names. Rudolph is charging between both of them to go after Garrett for ripping off his helmet. Okay, the play is done. He's gotten a penalty. The flag is thrown. Rudolph is persisting. And so 66 is pushing Garrett away. Rudolph is still after Garrett. And then Miles Garrett who has the helmet in his hand, just cocks back with his right hand and just slams the helmet in the Mason Rudolph set. It was a clean tackle. But then Rudolph's like, I'm going to rip off your helmet. And so Miles is like, all right, I'm going to take your helmet, jackass. So he took the helmet, got the flag, being separated, and then here comes Mason Rudolph. And then Miles is like, oh, really? You want some more? Bow. And then here comes Pouncey, punching, kicking him. And then everything turns into a big skirmish. And then Ojanobi comes up and then hits Rudolph from behind. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Sorry for that bad podcasting and all that. that, uh, 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 But Miles Rudolph hit. Mason Miles Rudolph. Miles Garrett hit Mason Rudolph in the head with his own helmet. Never in my 36 years on this planet has have I seen something like that on a football field. I've seen fights, I've seen people get stomped on. Everybody saw Albert Hainsworth stomping on stomping on a, a player no helmet a few years back. Uh, I believe he got five or six game suspension when he was with the Titans when that happened. And I I just don't know what happened. <laughs> and just just the uh, let me run it back here. Just eight seconds. Eight seconds. The clock has stopped at eight seconds. 
when Garrett slams him with the helmet. What? Uh, it literally makes... The whole thing is just stupid. The game's over. 21-7. Why did Rudolph feel the need to try to rip Garrett's hair, um, helmet off? Because he wraps him up, Garrett spins, and pulls him down on top of him so he's not taking the full brunt of the hit. It was unavoidable. Garrett was right there. He could not stop. So Garrett wrapped him up in the most professional, easy way possible. So even if he got a late hit, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, uh, roughing a passer, that's fine. But he still tried to protect Rudolph. And then Rudolph is like, what the fuck? Blah, 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 blah. And, and then Miles just lost it. I don't know what it was, man, but, man, like, Garrett came out after the game and said he made a mistake. That's not how he plays. He doesn't know what happened. He just lost his cool. He admitted he made a mistake. He's taking full ownership. I don't know if Rudolph's come out and said anything about this. Baker said he wasn't going to, like, that he couldn't stand for that. Uh, a lot of the Browns are being, are saying they can't stand for that. So Miles Garrett hit another football player from another football team with his own helmet. And then Ojinobi comes up and then just blasts Rudolph in the back as a retaliation. <sighs> I've seen fights. I've seen people get stomped in the head. I've seen everything on the football field except for this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play you the video that I shot that I sent to... um... Hold on, Anthony with the... Oh, Anthony saw him out the Browns making the playoffs. Uh, So I sent E a video. So look. Miles Garrett just hit a dude in the head with a helmet. This is four beers hyphen, by the way. He deserved it because uh, Rudolph totally instigated that whole fracas. I said he deserved so it. Miles Garrett just hit a dude in the head with a helmet. He might get deep six the rest of the season. This next Browns Steelers game is going to be so real here in 17 days. Browns are going to win this 21 7. There's still five seconds on the clock, and nobody knows what to do. Like, wow. This is going to overshadow a great team win by the Browns. <laughs> this, this, this is a super hot take. What? They're not on Baker. No, because Baker, Baker do something crazy. They might be going after This might be an NFL equivalent of Malice at the Palace right now. Other than the fan interaction. That's a super hot take, but I'm sticking with it. He's watching the drama unfold. So never in my life have I seen another grown ass man, another grown ass man with a helmet on the football field. Week. Aaron's gonna have a huge five too. Yeah. Week 13 in Pittsburgh is gonna be so. Hey, do you want to go to Pittsburgh and watch that game? I would love to. I would love to, my friend. Uh, Rudolph instigated that whole thing, though. That was all Rudolph. <laughs> he said he'd get in the locker room. He's like, get your ass out. And you know what? Freddie's pissed. He should be. Tomlin's pissed. This is stupid. There was eight seconds left in the game, man. So there you go. The four beers take and now the sober take, man. Like, I feel like it's malice at the palace level because th- this might be the worst on the field incident in NFL history.
there wasn't anybody punching fans in the stands, but the level, man, like, even if I think back to some of the worst NBA fights, first one comes to mind is uh, Kermit Washington and Rudy Tomjanovich. If you ain't seen that video, get on your YouTuber, your YouTuber, and search Kermit Washington, Rudy Tomjanovich. Uh, Kermit Washington played for the Lakers in the, I think this happened in the 80s, maybe uh, 70s. And Kermit Washington is scuffling with another player. And Rudy Tomjanovich is trying to come up and stop the, he played for the Rockets at the time, trying to stop the whole fight. Same Rudy who won two titles in Houston in the 90s. Coached the Lakers for a little bit, didn't work out. Rudy's trying to come up and intervene, and Kermit Washington just sees somebody coming at him out of the corner of his eye, and he just turns and hits him, and Rudy's leveled. Still one of the most nastiest fights, punches, and, and like, he, he destroyed Tom Janovich's face. It was bad. And I don't know how many games Washington got. I, he got a lot of games, because he had the, like, longest suspension in NBA history until... Spreewell went after his coach, and until Artest and Jackson went into the stands, it sucks because this game was a real turning point, possibly for the Browns. Two straight wins, a win over a, the, the, their biggest rival in the division, a nice home win, puts them at four and six, still in playoff contention. Puts the Steelers at 500, 5-5. Five five. Helps them in the AFC North where they're still undefeated so far this season. And then for it all to just kind of go to shit in the very last moments of the game. It, like I said to Anthony, it reminded me of uh, the Patriots-Seahawks Super Bowl like after the interception. After they didn't run uh, beast mode and uh, Russell threw the pick and the Patriots had the ball. Homeboy from uh, from WVU, he went nuts and got, I think he got thrown out of the Super Bowl. The first player to be ejected from the Super Bowl. He did some foul shit too. But it, 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 was, on, it was not on the level of hitting another player with a helmet. Let me see. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Super Bowl ejection. Here we go. Play. All kinds of clips. Get it out of here, though. Yep. And, and Belichick was saying, make sure these guys fire off. Look at everybody inside. Seattle Raiders are oh, jumping now. Out of all things, if they jumped off and weren't drawn, that'll take them to the six-yard line. The officials will confer. Michael Bennett jumps off sides more than anybody so this else. This is right after the pick in Super Bowl 49. And in this critical last chance moment. This is nothing like Miles Garrett, but it reminded me of it. And he wasn't. So the Seahawks are self-destructing after, God, why didn't they run him? Yeah, Give it to Marshawn. Wow. They were going Tom Brady is a goat, man. And Bill Belichick Fucking Tom Brady. After all the hard weeks. Oh, well, I was right there. Okay, so they line back up. Victory formation. This time... They start After pushing and shoving. And then a scrum, of course. Here you go, flags. Well, they will have an ugly ending to what was a pretty terrific ball game. Well, Irvin. Out there. And, 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 and you know, from yeah. Seattle standpoint, Bruce what? Irvin. Former Raider Bruce Irvin started that, I mean, just started shit because he was frustrated. They just lost the Super Bowl. <sighs> they didn't run Marshawn at the one. Russell throws the pick. Then Michael Bennett goes off sides. And then Bruce Irvin just took out his frustration on, like, any Patriot that was near him. And he got thrown out of the Super Bowl. But this, why did Miles swing with the helmet? A defenseless head against a football helmet. Those things are meant to protect heads, not break them. And 
Like this is all anybody's talking about on the sports shows right now. I, I guarantee I guarantee it right now. Oh man. And so people are popping off with oh well there should be criminal charges and that was assault. Schefter tweeted out assault. I I don't know if there'll be criminal charges. I guess Mason Rudolph would have to push him. Um, but I mean, normally with these things, like the league uh, handles what they do, and then there's a huge fine. And normally police aren't brought in, but there's people saying that the Browns should just go ahead and cut Miles Garrett. Angel said that after I showed her the video this morning. She's like, "Are they going to cut him?" I was like, "I don't know. Like, I wouldn't think so." <sighs> Cause like I said, from everything I know of Miles Garrett, he's a stand-up dude, man. And he just he just lost it. He just completely went bonkers. But why would it be? Why would it be at Mason Rudolph? Cause like I said, Garrett was not trying to hurt him on the tackle. He tried to protect him. And then Mason Rudolph call it frustration at the game and the Browns defense or whatever. And he he lost it a little bit too. But trying to pull a, a pull his helmet off and setting him off. And then Miles like, all right, well you want to pull my helmet here? I'm gonna pull your helmet, little nigga, you know. And then he was getting pushed to like the other Steelers player was like, hey, hey, back up, man, like, look, forget it. And then Mason still like a freaking. Uh, he just kept coming. And then got popped in his dome. And he just took the shot. Here's the thing. Rudolph took the hit to the cranium. And was chilling. Like, whatever. I'm sure he had to get checked out for concussion signs, man. And it, it just was a bad end to a... To a good football game for the Browns. A bad one for the Steelers. Happy to see the Steelers lose. Happy for the Browns. Best Browns win all season long. And then this. So I had mentioned in that video clip. That I thought. That uh, Miles might get suspended the rest of the season. There's six games left. Losing Miles Garrett for those six games will be awful. And if the Browns make the playoffs, is he suspended for the entire NFL season? The remainder? Does he only get X amount of games? Because if he only gets six games and the Browns still make the playoffs, then he's coming back for that wild card game. Possibly a divisional game, depending on how the standings fall. Oh, man. They could come out later, and I don't think the league said anything yet because I I keep checking to see if there's been any announcements from from the league about uh, any announcements from the league. And... No, it's mostly... uh, Mostly uh, reactions. So here, CBS Sports. NFL players react to Browns' Miles Garrett swinging helmet at Steelers. Uh, ESPN, Miles Garrett suspension for Steelers-Browns fight. Why he deserves record-setting, I'm guessing they're going to say record punishment for helmet swing. Uh, Maurice Pouncey, a hero for Miles Garrett payback and Browns-Steelers fight for the New York Post. Uh, Miles Garrett helmet attack, no police investigation, so that's out. Mason Rudolph's legal team reviewing Miles Garrett incident. Potential legal fallout from Miles Garrett, Mason Rudolph fight on Thursday. Rudolph's agent weighs in on Garrett's actions. Browns, Miles Garrett brawl could lead to hefty fine, lengthy suspension. NFL should suspend Browns, Miles, Browns as Miles Garrett for the rest of the season. Miles Garrett, I made a mistake. I lost my cool. Man. Inexcusable. Browns Miles Garrett denounced for helmet attack on Mason Rudolph. It's bad, man. Pittsburgh Post Gazette. 
uh, Mason Rudolph's legal team reviewing reviewing everything, but then they, I just saw something about no police charges. This is filed at 8.16 a.m. Uh, spoke reporters about three minutes after the game ended. He called Garrett's actions pretty cowardly and Bush League. He also said he was fine. Reporter asked him to fill in after he the helmet below the top of his head. Rudolph's agent, Timothy Younger, said Friday morning via text that he is still gathering information on Thursday night incident before any decisions were regarding legal or civil actions Rudolph's behalf were made. Being hit on your, there are many risks in NFL QB assumes every snap taken on the field. Being hit on your uncovered head by a helmet being swung by a 275 pound defensive man is not one of them. Tonight could have had a catastrophic ending. The matter will be reviewed thoroughly. And then let, let me just bounce back to that one that said there will be um, no charges filed. That's from TMZ, so you know it's true. Oh, that was, this is at 6 a.m. Cleveland Police Department is not investigating Miles Garrett for assault stemming for helmet attack. Uh, so, the pen. Oh, man. Mason Rudolph seems like the type who might get a legal team involved. But then, but then how would that play out? How, how would that play out? Because if there is some kind of legal action from Rudolph towards Garrett on top of whatever the league does to him, how does how does that make him look not so much in the Steelers locker room but I don't know man it, he started the whole thing is the thing <laughs> that that's the whole thing and I'm I'm just going to go ahead and go there let's just go ahead and go there white quarterback gets pissed off goes after a big black dude black dude retaliates once starts the matter is kind of over the white guy persists and then gets banged on on his fucking cranium miles garrett is obviously the wrong party in this but rudolph has some explaining to do too why was any of that necessary from him let's roll reverse it Let's roll reverse it, shall we? Uh, let's say Jameis Winston, who already has a sketchy past with uh, the law and making bad decisions and things like that. Let's take Mace or Jameis Winston drops back in the end of a loss against the Houston Texans. Let's say the Steelers, in fact, against the Houston, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, taking it, they're losing, drops back. Uh, does a little shovel pass, and then, oh, look, there's T.J. White. White can't do anything not to hit him. White protects him the best way he can, takes him down gently, and then Jameis gets mad, starts going after T.J. White, and this whole incident unfolds the exact same way. T.J. Watt is still a maniac, but then I guarantee you more of the attention will be focused on Jameis. Jameis Winston instigated. This is just his character. He always, he he's... This is the kind of person he is. And Lord, I uh, wait till I see Janice. Janice is going to be all about. I'll probably get a text about Miles Garrett being a thug and horrible and everything. I'm sure we'll have a couple conversations about it this weekend. Janice is my mother in law. She hates Baker from his uh, Oklahoma days. And so she she likes seeing Baker lose. But I, I'll. It's. And Angel's media thing is cut him and void his contract and everything. It's pretty fucking bad, man. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think Dorsey or the Haslams will go that far. It's funny, the same day they uh, cut Antonio Callaway because he's facing a 10-game 10 10 suspension for breaking the substance abuse policy again. This happens. So the Browns just took a stand against we don't want this kind of player on our team who can't stay clean and be here and be a part of the team. And then they have their number one draft pick of three years ago hit another defenseless player with a helmet. I, I If it was Jameis and T.J. Watt, man, T.J. Watt be getting a lot of shit, but nobody other they're on Twitter, there's some of it, man. But... You, you just don't see you, 
you you just don't see the same vitriol. Here, let's let's type in Mason. Mason Rudolph. Let's see what the latest is on Mason Rudolph here. So Mason Rudolph said no part in that brawl, not one bit. He's completely the victim. That's okay. So, uh, Mason Rudolph. Okay, so that's from a black guy, Miami made Mr. Uh, Mr. Sears ninety two on Twitter. Then we got Y equals Y Philly fan JSI. Mason Rudolph didn't deserve what happened to him, but he started to fight. That being said, this isn't the first time Miles has been dirty. And he should be suspended for a long time. He's a piece of shit. And he's no better than Vontez Perfect. Perfect is a fucking thug. I have no respect for that fool. And he's on my team, and I I have no respect for him. He's a fucking menace. And and Mason Rudolph in the video looked like the white boy trying to get sprayed at the white expression, the free expression tunnel. Here. Here. Please get it together. Miles Garrett threw a late hit on Mason Rudolph, and Rudolph wasn't being a punk. Get it straight. Uh. Steelers fans act like Mason Rudolph didn't try to rip Garrett's helmet off first and then get in Garrett's face. I'm in no way condoning it, but Mason Rudolph should be held partly responsible for his action. Ah. <sighs> Stop talking at Max Kellerman. Emotions run high on a football field. You can't say Mason Rudolph started it. It doesn't justify swinging a helmet. You're an idiot. Mason Rudolph had it coming and no one is talking about it. Here we go. One more. Dude, you instigated Mason Rudolph at Mason 2 Rudolph. At Rudolph 2 Mason. Dude, you instigated this, but the thing pressing criminal charges are ridiculous. The rest of the NFL is watching. That's what I mean, man. So, for the most part, it seems like... Coffee break. But for the most part, it seems like... No one is saying what Miles did was acceptable. Because it wasn't. It was outrageous. But Mason Rudolph had a hand in all this. And he's getting pretty much exonerated. No one's paying attention to... Pay no attention to the quarterback who started it in the corner. Is what it feels like. It's it's just insane. <laughs> so, my best guess... Uh, I think they suspend... Miles Garrett for the rest of the season. I don't think the Browns void his contract or anything like that. I think they'll stand by him. Mason Rudolph should get a game or two for his instigation of it. He was just as guilty in everything leading up to Mason Rudolph pummeling him with that helmet. If the league has any mercy on... um. Did I say Mason? See, these damn names, these Miles and Mason. Um, Yeah, Mason Rudolph, I feel like should get at least a couple game suspension. He was just as guilty of instigating everything up to the moment of getting hit with the helmet by Miles Garrett, in case I didn't say that correctly. Pouncey, he should get fined. He was protecting his quarterback like... I feel like that penalty would not have been hitting and kicking if he hadn't just seen his teammate get assaulted with a football helmet on the field. Fine penalty. Ojanobi, fine him. Maybe, a, I don't think he needs a game. Fine Ojanobi. He shouldn't have hit Rudolph from the back. Garrett should get fine. Rudolph should be fine. But what will probably happen... Knowing Roger, they're going to they're going to probably spend uh, Garrett for the season and find him. Rudolph will get a very hefty fine, a big fine. He won't get any time. 
He won't get any kind of suspension. Pouncey will get a fine. He won't get suspended. And Ojinobi will get a, a fine as well. That's how I think it'll play out. And uh, if it was a black quarterback and a white and a white defensive end, man, it, it I just think the reaction would be different. And I hate to take it there, but it's something that needs to be addressed in this whole whole cluster that that was the Browns that was the Browns Steelers fracas at the end of the game. So make sure you tune in to Browns on Our Blood next week. Uh, be interested to hear Eric and Anthony's takes on that. I don't know if I'll be on the show next week, depending on when they record, but be very interested to hear their takes, their responses to what the league comes down with. Or they could go, they already could go, or Goodell could completely botch this and be like, uh, Miles Garrett, you're getting, uh, two games and, and we're just going to find everybody else. <laughs> and we're finding you, Miles Garrett. Everybody be like, what? How how are you only, how are you in another bear at the helmet? You only get two games. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. So I will keep a sharp eye on this. But I, I just could not I I could not talk about it, man. Look, I don't have much time. Alright? So let me just say something real quick. My name is EG and I am the host of two shows that are part of the hyphen podcast group the first show is called catch the show it's a show where i talk about music related news and pop culture upcoming tours that you may want to catch shows of and i tell you about a show that i call because it's the number one concert review podcast in the world and i've reviewed shows from beyonce to kendrick lamar to even the backstreet boys so yeah that's catch the show the other show is called the underground monster slightly different kind of show but still music related it's where i cover basically underground independent hip-hop horrorcore and the juggalo culture so yeah if you're interested in either one go to hyphenpodcastgroup.com and or go to your favorite podcast platform and just search for them and hit that subscribe button okay got that cool now let's get you back to the show you were originally listening to my daddy's podcast is called Hyphenation. It's the world's greatest podcast. Barack Obama approved. On Hyphenation, my daddy talks about all kinds of cool things. And sometimes I'm on the podcast too. Sometimes he has his friend Marcus on. Sometimes he stays up really late and he's tired the next day. But it's worth it. But he loves his podcast and I love his podcast. So I really want you to listen to Hyphenation. So daddy doesn't get sad. He really doesn't get sad though because he has me. Oh wait, please listen to Hyphenation. Thanks y'all. I love the podcast. So please, please, please try to join. But if you know. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. This has been a Hyphen Podcast Network production. They're the bestest. I'm getting paid at exposure.